Hello biologists, we are going to continue to work on lab 2.20 on natural selection and experimental design. Remember, we're working on experimental design so we can practice for the Minnesota State Science Test. Um, you should have viewed part one before you started this part two. In part one, we got through filling out the two data tables and now we're going to start to answer the questions in the lab. Remember the lab sheet you could, should get from doc sharing and we're working on a FET simulation on natural selection. Here's what your lab sheet should look like. Remember if you need the URL to find the FET simulation it's right here at the top of the lab or I'll also put it in the notes in the YouTube. So we already finished uh, Data table three together, we figured out our hypothesis for this experiment in part one. Then you filled out data table two um, on your own using the FET simulation. And now we're going to do question six. We're going to compare in question six the percent of short teeth, or actually let's make that long teeth since that's the mutation, long teeth at the beginning of the simulation and the end. And make sure that you're bringing in data to your explanation from that table two just above right here. You want to be looking at the long teeth mutation. What happened to the percent of long te teeth rabbits? Did it start low in the beginning and go to high, or did the opposite happen? For number seven, we want to know, does the data support our hypothesis? In part one, this was my hypothesis. If there is a long teeth mutation, then more bunnies with long teeth will survive because they can obtain better food. You might have written something like that, or you might have had a different hypothesis based on what you know about bunnies and teeth. Make sure you explain how your data does support or does not support your hypothesis. In this case, I did see my data support my hypothesis because the percent of bunnies with long teeth increased over time as the generations continued. So number eight. Given the current definition of evolution being a change in allele frequency over time, did any of the mutations above fail to cause the population to evolve? If so, which one? Use your data to explain what you know. Well, we have data from two experiments. And both these experiments, we saw evolution happen because we did not see static allele frequencies. We saw allele frequencies change. However, there could be other mutations in the simulation that don't cause evolution, that are stable in the Hardy-Weinberg sense. So you could experiment some more and find some of some mutations that don't cause the population to evolve, or you can just talk about the ones we looked at. Remember, not all mutations cause evolution. Some of them are so harmful they cause the individual to just not survive right away and if they don't pass on their genes in the mutation then the mutation doesn't uh, get passed on and change the allele frequencies of the population. So not all mutations cause evolution. In our case from our data in the two tables above we did see the population evolve. The mutations you made were in reality small changes in the DNA. Briefly explain how a small change in DNA such co can so cause such a huge evolutionary shift within a population. Well, what's happening is those mutations get passed on to offspring. And if that offspring is more successful, in the case of the brown bunnies, they were better able to hide from predators, or in the long teeth, they were better able to uh, access food resources, then that allele becomes more frequent in the population. 
So even though it's a small change in the DNA, if it becomes much more frequent in the population, you are going to see an evolutionary shift because that allele becomes more frequent. So allele frequency changes as it benefits the organism. And you can elaborate that. You should write at least a couple of sentences. I'm just writing summaries for you. Why does it take so many generations for long teeth to take over the population? Well, it takes a long time for ra rabbits to breed. Um, but that's not the real re It doesn't take a really long time. Compared to bacteria, though, it's a very long time. Um, there are... Uh, the mutation just started out in one individual. And so that one mutation has to be multiplied, and it takes a while for that one mutation to become many mutations, because that one individual breed, produce offspring, those offspring have to breed, and um, that just takes a lot of generations. You have one and you have to make it into a hundred rabbits. And if you have any experience breeding animals or know anyone who breeds animals, it takes a while if you have one animal that you think is a good example of the species and you want, like, you're breeding dogs, and you want more of that kind of animal, it takes a while. In one individual, so our individual, our individual with mutation had to reproduce, and then those offspring had to reproduce. So the mutation, we went from one mutation to hundreds. Why did we only change one thing? Because we wanted to know which thing caused the change in allele frequency. If you change more than one thing, you can't tell what's causing the result in experiments. So in, in experiments in general, we only want to change one thing at a time. That's why we only did one mutation at a time and one kind of selection. In nature, there are many variables. And that is why it's difficult to study populations in nature. You have to look at populations over a long time and consider many variables in addition to the one mutation that you might be looking at. And please write more than I'm just making notes here. I'm just sort of giving you uh, starting sentences. Why are selection factors important in this experiment? Well, if you accidentally forgot to add a selection factor, you'll find out why. You can go run the sim without a selection factor and figure that one out. In this lab, there are two kinds of selection, predation and ability to find food. So we looked at wolves and how they cause selection, and we looked at how the ability to find food or use the food that's there with your long teeth. There are other kinds of selection in, uh, that happen in nature. Sexual selection is one of them that we talked about in class. We talked about how the choosy females in birds often select males with longer tail feathers or in the case of prairie chickens, the big puffy sacks in their necks. Um, the environment also selects. Climate change is causing a, a lot of uh, selection right now as species have to adjust to different environmental conditions either most of them they maybe need lighter fur but in some cases they need to 
have heavier fur. A few places in the world are getting colder and rainier. So if the organism doesn't have the right fur or the right fins or the right mobility, um, polar bears right now are having to learn how to swim. So good swimmers, characteristics that make polar bears good swimmers are being selected for right now in the Arctic. So there are lots of different kinds of selection and you can think of others as well. The bonus question is, what do you think would happen if the long teeth were a recessive mutation and why do you think it would be different? In our case, the way we ran it, we ran it with long teeth as a, recess, uh, as a dominant mutation. You can, however, run it as a recessive mutation and I encourage you to go rerun the simulation and see what happens. But try to make a prediction before you do that. A recessive mutation would probably since it isn't dominant, remember you need two copies of a recessive mutation for that mutation to show up in the individual's phenotype. So think about if how that's going to affect the time or the probability that an individual will show the phenotype will actually show long teeth because they have to have two copies. And that's it. If you have questions, you can always come to office hours or put them in the comments. Thanks so much. Remember to get this sheet from Doc Sharing, and when you're done, put it in the Dropbox. It's Miss R signing off. Oops, one more thing. If you do want to run your long teeth mutation as recessive, click right here. Thanks.